everyone, welcome back, I'm Erin, and I hope you are feeling fresh as a daisy because that's where I'm going with my September bullet journal setup. In case you can't tell from my accent, I'm Australian, and here in Australia, September means the beginning of spring, which means jacaranda season is coming, which is a super beautiful thing in my city of Brisbane. It also means that hay fever season is upon us, which is great when you're midway through a pandemic. It also means that bushfire season is starting, which is not so much fun as you may recall from last year. Bushfire season kind of took a toll on us. And it's also the beginning of exam season for the university students. So September means a lot of things. I wanted to keep things simple for September. I feel like I say that every month, but at the same time, I guess I felt like tapping into the creative juices a little. I've been getting super into alcohol ink and a little bit into watercolor and stuff while we've been not at work so much. So I kind of leaned into the arty thing here and um, sort of away from my lazy bits of paper that are my go-to and went for something a little bit more in line with my beginning of the year setup for my bullet journal. And I've gone for these little daisy patterns. These dudes are so easy to draw. At this point, I hadn't decided completely on which of these yellow pens I was gonna use. They're all Faber-Castell Pitt artist pens and I ended up going with of the three of them, the most medium yellow, because the lighter one was a little bit too fluoro, the darker one was a little bit too gudetama egg yolk for my liking, so that's what we've ended up with. And then I've got this pastel blue pit brush pen as well. I started out with the pens first and then went back in with the um, Sharpie pen to outline everything and then decided that wasn't the most efficient way to do this. So I changed the order around for I think every other flower that I draw in this layout for the rest of September. The way these flowers work is you just draw yourself an oblongy ovally shape. You pick a random spot in it to be the center of the flower, um, preferably not actually in the middle of the oblongy that you drew, although sometimes it's okay, but not for all of them. And then from that center point, you draw all of your petals and they have to go all the way to the outside of the oblong shape that you drew and that's going to give the illusion of perspective. Extra points if you curve your petals downwards a little bit at the outside to really give them that little bit of petally shape. And for the center of the flower, I just did a whole bunch of little scribbly U shapes just to give it some texture. And I feel like they've actually worked really well. I do not consider myself a doodle master whatsoever. I tend to save it for that big beginning of the year setup when I'm feeling really excited about a fresh bullet journal, but I don't know, I feel like so little has happened with this year that maybe September's gonna feel like a fresh start. Wonderful thing about daisies is that they have very bare stems. They don't have a lot of leaf action typically happening until quite far down on the stem. So you can get away with literally just drawing a line and that's it. The Sharpie pen dries instantly, which is great because it means I can erase straight away. And because I've already done the center of all of these flowers when I was working out which of my yellows I wanted, I can just erase over the top because that's already dry and then go straight back in with this blue pit brush pen, fill in, not too precisely, mind you, I'm kind of just scribbling away approximately where the space of these petals are. And that's the decoration. So it's really easy. It's a little repetitive. It's much faster than some of the other doodle types that I've used in the past. Definitely recommend it. You can make your petals whatever heckin' color you are feeling because this is, you know, bullet journals are about self-expression and making what works for you and what works for you may not work for me. So that's totally up to you. Sometimes I add a cover page, sometimes I don't. I decided not to for this particular layout. Just went straight to the calendar page. I've done a two page, uh, two, yeah, a two page spread calendar page for the beginning of September. Would you call it a monthly overview? I never know what to call it. I never know what to tag it on Instagram either. Speaking of which, if you'd like to follow my bullet journaling and art adventures, you can do that on Instagram. I changed my handle recently, so it's now erinsmith.art, I believe. Yeah, that's the one. I'll put it on the screen so you don't have to trust me on that. You might notice as we go through the layout that I get more confident with my flowers and you will too. Trust yourself. You can do this. 
One trick I found really works is to draw the entire petal. Even if you've already got a line that would be the outside border of the petal, fill it in anyway and that's really going to give you that nice defined shape. I didn't do it all the time, but when I did, I feel like it, it made the difference. Guess what guys, I didn't mess up my calendar layout this time. I've actually got the right number of days for the month. September is a 30 day month, which means that, you know, I didn't accidentally lop off the 31st like I did for August. You know what? I didn't end up using my bullet journal all that much through August anyway, which is odd because I had some stuff going on, like I wasn't in my house all the time like I have been for other months out of this year. But it's just nice to know that the dates are going to line up because they don't always. <laughs> We all make mistakes. I was digging the blue and yellow theme. I wasn't sure if I was just going to stick to those two colours or not, but I've decided that that is the go for September. Very sort of springtime. Makes me think of idyllic kitchens in storybooks when I was a kid, so um, that's always nice. I'm using the same brush pen to over, kind of just draw over where I've marked out where September's going to go, and that's sort of going to be a drop shadow, but I'm not going to be too precise about making sure that uh, my lines are on the edge of it so it'll kind of be a bubble around the heading in just the black sharpie pen and I've used the same yellow that I'm going to continue to use throughout the rest of the layout on the day of the week headings over the top of the boxes here so I know which day is which. I as always like to start my week on a Monday because many things happen typically on my weekends as opposed to my weekdays so I just find it's easier to have them next to each other rather than split. Adding a little quote down the bottom here, I'm not typically a quotey kind of girl, but I am an Earth, Wind & Fire fan. The song September, super appropriate for this layout, and I had a September-inspired playlist of some funky tunes with some Curtis Mayfield and some Jamiroquai and some other fantastic music on while I was setting this up, so I thought Never Was a Cloudy Day, which is a lyric from September, would be a suitable little quote to go on my September cover slash calendar page. Let me know what your favorite song is going into September. It doesn't have to be anything to do with September, just a song that you associate with September or that you're just really excited about right now. All y'all saying BTS is dynamite, I am with you. <laughs> it is such a bop. Moving on to the exact same layout as I always have. Well, I guess it's my new normal layout. How often are we gonna say new normal about this year? A whole lot more, probably. So the left side page is my gratitude tracker. I'm just doing one word a day. I was previously doing a whole line, but I don't know, it felt a bit like forced. So I thought if I just do one word, that will simplify things a little bit. Um, a few more daisies down the bottom, and then there's a habit tracker on the opposite side. Here's a fun fact you might not have known about me. I've met BTS, actually. I was the official photographer for their Melbourne The Red Bullet Tour uh, concert in Melbourne in 2015. And usually when you shoot live music, you only get to shoot sort of the first three songs and that's it. And then you have to click your camera or they kick you out of the venue. But for some reason, I was the only photographer for this show. There was no other media there at all. And I got to shoot the whole show and my arms were very, very tired. But the boys were really, really nice to me. 30 day months are my favorite for the gratitude page because they can have this nice even 10 by three set up for the word of the day gratitude moments. I didn't have the letter denoting which day of the week each of these were for last month and I have been getting confused. So I'm adding that in just to make sure that I know what the heck is going on going forward. One thing to note if you want to really get your layout popping if you're doing some kind of decorative doodle like this. Overlay just a little bit over some of your layouts, like I've got this bottom right little daisy covering up the bottom corner of my Wednesday the 30th gratitude square. Not so much that it's going to interfere with the operation of the page, but just enough that it looks, I guess, purposeful, like the flowers are growing in front of the gratitude boxies there. Um, I just find that's a nice way to tie everything together. Also on this facing page, I've got space for 10 or 12 or something habits. I can't remember. Uh, I don't actually use all of them. I leave one spare just in case I think of something else that I need to track because I don't want to have boxed myself in, pardon the pun. But over here, I've actually got some of my flowers overlapping with each other. I've got one of them moving off the page and a little bit onto the gratitude side. Uh, stuff like that is really just going to like Take your layout to the next level. A little bit tricky to draw over the divide in the page, but you know, 
I'm also trying to make sure that my stems continue behind the habit tracker boxes and reappear at the bottom of the page. Going for a yellow drop shadow this time for my habits just because there's going to be a lot more blue on this page with the flowers around it so I thought something just for a bit of contrast rather than another blue heading like on the opposite side with the gratitude. I swear I write habits the exact same way in that sort of hand lettering style every time it looks exactly the same and oops sorry I missed me recording the coloring in of these flowers but uh, you get the idea. Just for a bit of context here this is my least favorite part of the setup is adding all of these numbers to the habit trackers. It takes a really long time, your hand cramps up. I had Bruno Mars on and that helped a lot, but I tried like filling it out a little bit differently just to break up the pattern and it wasn't good and I was trying to sing along and I, I couldn't write numbers and sing lyrics at the same time. So definitely if you're gonna do as many numbers on a page as I have just done, maybe concentrate on what you're doing. I don't know, just a suggestion, unless you're better at multitasking than me, in which case go off king, queen, non-binary ruler. You do you, you have a great time. This is the expenses page. It is the most utilitarian. There is no decoration on this page whatsoever except for the yellow backing to the top of the table, which is item, cost, and category for everything that I buy. I fill them in here, keep track of everything, put it all into my big overall expense tracker at the beginning of the year, and then I can track patterns in what I'm spending and work out budgets based on how much I could be saving in some areas. Put some more blue down behind the expenses, probably the worst hand lettering I've done in my bullet journal in a while, but that's okay. Over here we've got a content calendar. I desperately, desperately want to be the kind of person who uses one of these pages, but I have just become so disenchanted with social media in recent times. I just, it's so tiring. I've kind of been off it a little bit, but I, I want to get back on there because it does help me to get clients for my photography business and connect with people. I mean, I feel like when you're in the swing of social media, it's really fun. And when you're not, it's a huge drag. So I'm trying to get on top of this content calendar, make sure that I know, at least have a, a plan in mind for what I'd like to be doing. We shall see if I stick to it this time or not, but uh, you know, some more flowers going on here. Doing the whole outline in pen now before going in with even the white, uh, sorry, even the yellow for the center. Layering up some different sized petals. I'm so sorry about the focus going on here, guys. I'm not sure why that happened. The G9 is usually much more reliable than this as far as focus. I don't know if I've changed the setting and forgotten. Um, please bear with me just for a minute while I work this out. It will come back, I promise. You know, this is what TV looked like when we were younger. We were just so used to it that we didn't know. We had no idea what high definition was going to do for us going forward. Yeah, this blurriness is bothering me. I'm just going to speed this up until you can see what the heck I'm doing again. Cool. There we go. We're back. Okay. Going to add some blue to go behind my content calendar header over here. I will admit this layout took me longer than my typical bullet journal layouts just because of all of the drawing of petals. It's not something that I do particularly often because it's a bit more time consuming, but I also kind of, it's like an art therapy thing, I guess. I had a lot of fun doing it as well, so that's always nice. If you can see the light changing throughout, that's because the sun was setting while I was filming this. Um, and I had to come back in here with a video light off to the side. It's actually a an industrial work light, battery powered one from Bunnings, which is really handy. Um, definitely a bit brighter, so sorry for the inconsistency there. And all that's left to do is my weekly setup. I don't use dailies because I don't have that much to write down, even when things are busier and we're not in any kind of restricted living situation. Um, I don't use dailies, I just do weeklies and put everything on there. I borrowed this absolutely stunning layout from an Instagrammer known as Z Journals. She is from Melbourne and does the most gorgeous designs and I loved this weekly. Hers was much more uh, pinky pastels and a few different varieties of flower and foliage. Um, I've really ripped it off pretty closely here. <laughs> she also used Tombow's where I've got the Faber-Castells. I prefer the Faber-Castell brush pens over the Tombow's. So I've just transplanted some of my daisies down the sides here. I've used a black Faber-Castell pit brush pen as well for the little black circles on each of the days of the week. That's where I'm going to pop the number in with a white gel pen. You can see that chilling. 
over there on the left hand top left hand corner of the screen. Yes, I went a little bit too far with the yellow line demarcating my Thursday um, on the bottom left of the, the left side of the spread. I did end up fixing that actually. I went back in, as you'll see soon, I went back in with the white gel pen and just kind of drew over some of the yellow to like cancel it out, I guess. And it worked better than I thought it would, but I didn't think it would work. Uh, I didn't think the, the brush pen would stick to it after, so I didn't bother doing the flower. But then later on, off camera, I went over the, the bit of the flower where I've gone a bit too crazy with the yellow. And it actually did a really good job, um, even when I got the brush pen back in over top of it. So that's good to know. Um, a really good way to fix any little mistakes in your bullet journal is just to go over whatever your error was with some white gel pen and <laughs> things are gonna get a lot better. No one need ever know, because nobody looks as closely as we do at our own stuff. <clears throat> And that's September. The light has changed again because I had to film this the next day because they completely <laughs> ran out of light. I hope you've enjoyed planning with me for September. If you'd like to see any of my other bullet journaling videos, there will be a playlist in the, the end screen stuff. I do make one of these videos every month, so you can subscribe if you'd like to see some more of those in the future. Once again, my name is Erin. I hope that wherever you are, you are safe and happy and well. Sending you all of my best wishes for September, whether that is coming into springtime for you like it is for me, or if it's coming into autumn or fall, whatever you call it, wherever you are. I am a little bit jealous of everyone in North America because I was supposed to be coming to visit you guys next month. So um, have something pumpkin spice for me because I don't get to. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I will catch you again soon. Happy September.